The exposing of an anti-Muslim account on Twitter is causing wide-ranging ramifications for her family. You're watching What's Trending, I'm Shira Lazar. Be sure to like this video and subscribe for more social media news daily. The Twitter account at Amy Mech has over 230,000 followers. Her Twitter description says, God, family, and country, sports, fitness, and vegan, psychotherapist, and fixer, I fight for the wrongfully incarcerated in animals, hashtag Jews for Trump, hashtag NRA. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. And since 2012, she's been an institution in the far-right Twitterverse, with celebrity followers like Sean Hannity and Roseanne Barr. She's even been retweeted by President Trump himself. Though we should add that that doesn't quite set a high bar since President Trump frequently retweets this guy. Of course, tonight just confirming to Ed Henry that, yeah, maybe Donald Trump wanted to fire the special counsel for conflict. Does he not have the right to raise those questions? You know, we'll deal with this tomorrow night. We have a shocking video of the day to bring you, by the way. This footage comes to us from Arizona, where you see that red SUV, high-speed police chase. And many of her tweets are frightening in their prejudice. Here's one from 2015 that says, I think it's time for a barbecue, and shows a pig roasting a Muslim on a fiery Quran. And here's one where she calls President Obama Jihadi Obama, and says advisors for both him and George W. Bush were linked to the Muslim Brotherhood and Hamas. We're talking real crazy tinfoil hat type stuff. There are also some tweets that aren't exactly dangerous, just confusing. A spokesperson for the Council on American Islamic Relations called her a major cog in the Islamophobia machine. So for such a prominent account, it was really surprising that no one actually knew who she was. Some people online even suspected her of being a Russian bot. A recent story on the Huffington Post changed that. Writer Luke O'Brien identified at Amy Mech as Amy Jane Mecklenburg, a 45-year-old woman who lives in a small town outside New York with her husband, Sal Sino. And O'Brien's work for this article put the couple in a bit of trouble. Because Sino apparently is a senior executive at the WWE, an organization with a long-term promotional deal in Saudi Arabia. So what would happen if the Saudis found out that one of the WWE execs was married to a notorious Islamophobe? Well, the WWE did not want to find out. A spokesperson for the WWE told Luke O'Brien, now that it has come to our attention, Salcino is no longer an employee. Well, that was quick. When HuffPost published O'Brien's piece on May 31st, it had other ramifications as well. Amy's brother Daniel and his wife Alicia Guevara run Mecklenburg's, a cafe in Brooklyn, a fact which O'Brien noted in his article. When patrons saw this and they thought their money might be supporting Amy's cause, they bolted. Guevara said, by 8.15, we were completely empty and thought there was a good chance their business might not survive. Guevara posted to Facebook that they do not agree with Amy's politics and hope that patrons and staff will continue to feel safe eating there. She wrote, we are disturbed, revolted, and humiliated. She told the New York Times she had no idea her sister-in-law's Twitter account even existed before the HuffPost story came out and that they only see her a few times a year at family gatherings. If you don't know what doxing is, it is exposing the identity of someone who was previously anonymous. So, was it wrong to dox someone like Amy? My thoughts are no, because if you're putting yourself out there on Twitter like this, whether it's for love or for hate, you deserve to be exposed. But obviously, as a journalist or anyone who's exposing someone, if that's going to propagate harassment, I mean, there's a certain responsibility you might have in doing that. At the same time, you can't control what happens. But at the same time, the person spreading those messages, like Amy, has a responsibility too. If she doesn't want to take on what happens when people realize who she is, then she shouldn't be putting those things out there that she did put out there. It goes back to why it's much easier to say racist things like Amy did online anonymously than in person. Like, I'd be interested to see if she would just talk like that to someone in person. So that's why, in a way, we have to expose people like this so that, and I hate to use the word responsibility again, but they take responsibility for their actions and they realize this is not okay. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like all these consequences have stopped Amy. She continues to tweet around like a dozen tweets a day. And she even took aim at the author, Luke O'Brien. In a long, in-depth Twitter thread, she encouraged her supporters to contact Luke O'Brien and claims that her husband was wrongfully fired and discriminated against based on her views. In this thread, interestingly enough, she said, not only do I stand up for my rights, but also for women, LBGTQ, 
minorities, and persecuted Christians throughout the world. She notably leaves out Muslims on this list, which is to be expected. Since Mecklenburg's tweet thread, Luke O'Brien has been threatened as well, and he's legitimately worried that someone might show up at his house with an assault rifle in a Pizzagate-style show of misguided violence. The Huffington Post, meanwhile, has stood by O'Brien with his editor writing about how he followed journalistic protocols and gave Mecklenburg every opportunity to comment on the story before it was published. HuffPost also denied that they tried to get Sino fired, as Amy Mecklenburg argued in one of her tweets. They pointed out that O'Brien was suspended briefly from Twitter for telling one of his critics to go DDT himself, while they continued to let hate speech from accounts like at Amy Mac and others propagate online. So these are tough issues, and it brings up a lot of questions. Like, does an influential person on Twitter deserve the right to privacy, even from press? And what responsibility does Twitter have to better police their platform from hate speech and violence? We don't know all of the answers, but we want to know what you think. Let us know in the comments below. And be sure to like and subscribe for more of What's Trending.